Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I stand here with great humility, deep sorrow, and gratitude to honor the memory of a great son of the soil, my beloved husband, Michael Chilufia Sata. On behalf of the family, I sincerely thank the government through our head of state for organizing this auspicious event to commemorate 10 years since MCS's passing. Mr. President, your presence here today, despite your many competing priorities, has lightened our burden, and we pray that God continues to bless you each day and grant you eternal peace that only comes from him. It's very hard to believe that a decade has passed since Mr. Sata joined his ancestors. Yet we find comfort in knowing that his spirit remains with us, inspiring us through the principles he lived by and the legacy he left behind. The past 10 years have not been easy for me and the children, but your prayers and support have strengthened us. While the pain lingers and tears continue to flow, our faith in his God-fearing nature gives us hope that we shall meet again. I'm here to pay a tribute to a special man and I find it really difficult to summarize my husband in a few statements. To me and the family, President Sata was larger than life. In a world often clouded by uncertainty, Vamikaeli, as I fondly called him, stood as a beacon of clarity and insight. His remarkable sense of discernment allowed him to navigate life's complexities with an extraordinary depth of understanding. Whether in personal relationships or professional endeavors, Vamikaeli had an innate ability to see beyond the surface, discerning personalities, discerning truths, and falsehoods that others could overlook. One fond memory illustrates this, and it's actually the first time I met Mr. Sata during the corridors, uh, along the corridors of uh, UTH. He had come to see his friend, uh, Mr. Chifunda, with also another colleague, an MP of Kafue, Mr. Francis Matanda. We were walking towards each other along the, along the corridor, and Mr. Sata took a bet with the, Mr. Matanda and said, the, lady, the young lady coming in front of us is a medical doctor. The friend said, no, she looks like a cleaner. So when I approached them, Mr. Sata asked, Madam, do you work here? I said, yes, sir. What do you do? And I just uh, offhandedly answered, I'm a cleaner. So Mr. Matanda was very elated and he gleefully collected the money that they had bet. They then asked, to, they asked me to show uh, the way to E02 where Mr. Chifunda was admitted. So I took them to the ward and Mr. Chifunda happened to be my patient. So when we entered the ward, Mr. Chifunda was very happy to see me and he started introducing me to, to them. And you can imagine how the face of Mr. Matanda fell. But Mr. Sata was so overjoyed, he even charged his friend double the bet. That's how tables turned, and this moment not only revealed his sharp intuition, 
but also played a significant role in winning my heart. Michael Sata was known for his ambition, relentless drive, and sense of agency. He was a man on a mission, and he had little, very little patience for delays or excuses. In his determination and desire to effect real change, he could sometimes come across as blunt or even as a bully. It was quite amusing when he was governor to watch men scramble to their posts whenever they spotted his vehicle approaching or heard his baritone voice from afar. Their sudden flurry of activity was a testament to their respect and sometimes fear he inspired. In those moments, it was clear that his presence commanded attention and agency as everyone instinctively sought to appear busy and ready to tackle the day's challenges. And this obviously contributed to the title of him being called Man of Action. He believed that anything could be achieved and approached every problem as a challenge to overcome. His legacy includes transformative projects that have beautified and developed our cities with improved furniture, uh, improved infrastructure. You can't talk of Avondale housing complex without thinking of Michael Sata. Mesa housing project was a baby birthed by Michael Sata, and all these housing projects empowered many to become landlords. Fly over bridges, which saved many lives. I remember when he started constructing the Zesco flyover bridge, uh, President Kaunda then was uh, very suspicious of uh, this project and he fired him. But by the time he was firing him, many funds had been committed already and the flyover bridge was built. And for those that could remember, Kaunda went to commission this flyover bridge and he was very chuffed that uh, many lives were saved. But that was Michael Sata. He never minded that a project that for which he was fired for was something that others took credit for. He built many maternity uh, centers, midwifery led as an innovation because by then everyone used to come to UTH to deliver. But it decentralized maternity services to uh, centers which were as close to the people as possible. We talk about roads, you know, because he believed he needed to link Zambia. And all these roads have opened up a lot of Zambia. There is a lot of development that has actually started following the many roads that he put in. The list is endless. endless. But Michael Sata envisioned a Zambia that could stand tall among other nations. And while he did not live to see all his dreams fulfilled, his vision should and must continue to inspire. One of the attributes of Michael Sata was the fact that he was not tardy. He never stood for lateness. If a meeting was scheduled to start at 8, Michael Sata would be there at 7. There were many instances in many of uh, the portfolios he held as governor, as minister of uh, local government, as minister of health, minister of labor, minister without portfolios. There were many instances when employees were caught off guard because they always found he had closed the gate. For being two minutes late, he was, they were sent home. And I recall one midwife at Chilenje Clinic. He had gone to the Chilenje Clinic to make sure that the midwives and the nurses arrived on time. 
One of the nurses who lived in Woodlands was late, and I excuse was that uh, she lived in Chelston, and uh, it was always very difficult for her to navigate the different connections in buses. And thinking that she was clever, Mr. Sata transferred her immediately to Chelston Clinic. <laughs> the poor midwife did not know what to do. And he told her, tomorrow I'm going to come to Chelston Clinic. I must find you on time. There should be no excuse. So you can imagine, she had to be waking up at 5 a.m. every day to get on buses from Woodlands to go to Chelston Clinic. And for one week, he visited Chelston Clinic every morning waiting for this lady to arrive. She pleaded with the matrons, please send me back. I can't manage. It's too expensive for me. They referred her. I mean, who could go against Michael Sutter's uh, directives? So they told her the only thing you have to go and own up and tell the truth. After six months, she couldn't manage, and she went back to plead to be transferred. Him being an understanding man, he allowed her to go back. He had dissent that she was telling lies, and he wanted to show her that uh, dishonesty was not something that should be entertained. We talk about Michael Sata being a politician, but what people do not know is that he was a self-made politician, a man who was driven by a singular vision to make a meaningful difference in the lives of the Zambian people. His simplicity was another defining trait. He often shunned extravagance, preferring to use resources to uplift others. There were many attempts, especially when he was in the State House, to change his wardrobe. But he threatened dismissal, believing that the suits which were bought from the 19 Pendefi Kondo, <laughs> he believed those suits were adequate. And not only suits. I don't think any of you saw Michael Sata with a smartphone. His infamous Nokia 3310 was what he stuck with. There were many people that gave him, that gifted him smartphones. The children used to look forward to these smartphones being handed over to them. Him, he remained with uh, his phone. These stories may sound very simple issues to laugh about, but in reality, the stories demonstrate how faithful Mike Kosata was to things or people he treasured, which included his vision for a better Zambia. Despite his tough exterior, Michael was very charming and loving. I'm sure many of you would not agree with this statement, but I'm here to tell you he was a charming and very romantic person. <laughs> his dedication to harmony and unity was evident in every interaction. He was a selfless servant leader. Whether he was talking to the lowest of the lowest in the community, conversing with farmers or engaging with world leaders, he always brought warmth and honesty to his relationships. And so we are here today to celebrate his stance of honesty leadership as well as servant leadership. Though he was blunt and very straightforward, his bluntness was rooted in sincerity. He spoke from the heart. And his straightforwardness made his dedication unmistakable. He was always worried about the poor and vulnerable in society. Ten years after his demise, we should recall Michael Sutter's pledge on his inauguration to rule Zambia by the Ten Commandments. And many wondered how he was going to do that. But in Matthew 22, 
36 to 40, Jesus was asked, which is the greatest commandment in law? And Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. This is the first and the greatest. And the second is, love your neighbor as yourself. And this is why his favorite hymn was, to Temuane Banebonse. Understanding the two greatest commandments of the law, Michael Sata preached love. Michael Sata showed love to those that insulted him. Michael Sata forgave those that insulted and plotted against him. There were many times as a family we would get frustrated by his magnanimity, but his response was always, you know, William Sander had attacked him while he was on a campaign trail in Kitwe, but he accommodated him as he went on the PF campaign. And when we reminded him of what Sander had done, he said, uh, in fact, it was the Reverend Mutare who reminded him, and he told the Reverend Mutare, you are the ones who are supposed to preach love and preach forgiveness, and yet you want me to hate somebody. <laughs> so we need to learn how to love one another. Mr. President, Zambia has become polarized. It has become politicized. To spread love, we pray, Mr. President, that you embrace all Zambians, regardless of political affiliation, regardless of religion, regardless of the region where one comes from. We pray that through you, God will teach us to be more tolerant of one another. May the spirit of unity and oneness prevail over Mother Zambia. I think once we do this, Michael Sata will continue resting in peace because this is what he believed in. Dear friends, colleagues, I implore each one of us to carry forward this example of peace, love, forgiveness, honesty, and action. Let's honor his legacy by embracing his values, by fighting for what is right, and by never losing sight of our commitment to each other. Michael, my dear husband, though you are no longer here with us, your spirit lives on in every... Your, your spirit lives on in every heart you touched and in every life you changed. Thank you for your strength, thank you for your love and your unwavering belief in a better Zambia. Rest well, my love, who will carry on your vision and hold your memory close always. Intervene for your country, intervene for your fellow president that he may have peace, that he may have the strength and he may have the wisdom to carry on. I thank you. Thank you. That was a very lovely tribute to Dr. Christine Kassiba-Sata, whom I'm here today.